What happens in aphasia is really important to understand before you plan this treatment. In today's video, let's dive in to understand the neurophysiology behind the aphasia. I assure you, after watching this video, you will never have any confusion in this topic. Let's get started. Here are some important areas of the brain. First is the transcortical motor area, having some part of frontal and motor cortex. This area helps in memory and language retrieval process in order to initiate the speech. Then comes the Broca's area. This is primarily responsible for the speech production. Third is the auditory area in the temporal lobe, involved in the sound recognition. Auditory stimulus is well perceived in this area. And as you all know, the Wernicke's area. This is primarily responsible for comprehension and understanding in your brain. Neighboring it is the transcortical sensory area. This area is in the posterior part of temporal and parietal lobe and provides smooth sync between auditory and language pathways. This area is also known for its role in reading. And the last one involved is the primary visual area in occipital lobe, which recognizes visual information and links it to the language pathway. So after you have understood all these important areas and their role in comprehension and production of language, there's one more guy in the story which connects and coordinates all of these areas. It is called the arcuate fasciculus. The arcuate fasciculus is a dense collection of neuronal pathways which connects with all these important areas and therefore its function is called conduction. So now let's have a look again. If the brain lesion has involved transcortical motor area, it is called the transcortical motor aphasia. It is also called as non-fluent aphasia characterized by difficulty initiating and producing speech. If the brain lesion has involved Broca's area, it is called the Broca's aphasia, which is very common. In this, there is difficulty in articulating of speech. The next common one is the Wernicke's aphasia. It impairs a person's ability to understand language, despite having fluent and grammatically correct speech. If the lesion is near temporal lobe, this transcortical sensory area gets involved, and this is called transcortical sensory aphasia. And if the visual area is involved, the visual processing is impaired, and it is then called anomic aphasia. And if the lesion has involved the arcuate fasciculus, the conduction is impaired and therefore it is called conduction aphasia. Sometimes, in the large MCA stoke, some part of all these areas gets involved, and in this case it is called the global aphasia. Aphasia can have a variety of symptoms, and in each type there is something intact and something lost. It's not only just the speech, it can be many other abilities that can be compromised in aphasia. Here you can take a screenshot of this table. It will help you evaluate what is intact and what is lost in different aphasia. In next part, we will discuss different strategies to treat aphasia. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.